I wrote a post actually one time after I helped a, a large scale e-commerce retailer that hadn't 301 redirected its images, mm -hmm. right? So the, the images oh, weren't, right. right. So mm -hmm. I wrote a post about like, don't forget to redirect images during a Definitely. migration, right? Visual content, so important. Very important. You would recommend obviously making sure to 301 yeah. redirect all images yeah. and then just wait if it takes a little longer yeah. to refresh in yeah, yeah. the image index, then Definitely. just do Definitely. that. Definitely, right? and, and uh, just check the server logs on the old domain to see like if, if traffic really has rammed down and once you are happy with not seeing as much call activity, you can flip the switch and say like, okay, we can now discard this. Hey and welcome everybody to a new episode of SEO Mythbusting. With me today is Ben Gabe and uh, we usually meet at conferences when we are speaking on various stages uh, or we talk on Twitter. But what are you doing when we are not meeting on conference uh, occasions or when we are on Twitter? Yeah, sure. So I run my own consulting business, G Squared Interactive, mm -hmm. where I typically am helping companies that have experienced a drop in traffic. Cool. Yeah. All right. That yeah. sounds pretty awesome. Absolutely. And today we are here to talk about one possible uh, issue that they might encounter, and that's uh, site moves, right? Site moves, URL migrations, domain name changes, right? Exactly. All right, okay, that's really cool. So, what are like the misconceptions or problems that people are facing there? Yeah, sure. So, there's lots of myths, and there's actually a lot of confusion in the industry mm. about these. I mean, some site owners are scared to actually pull the trigger on it um, because they don't know what's going to happen, and others are actually pulling the trigger too quickly, not preparing for it. And then there's a lot of people in between, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I guess the biggest myth is that you will always experience a drop in traffic with a domain name change oh, or site migration. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think that's a very good one because uh, the answer to it is it depends, as you know. So, a lot of times people are not understanding what a site move is. So, if you are literally just moving from one domain to the other, copying pretty much the entire URL structure and the entire content over, um, then you not necessarily see a drop of traffic. I mean, you will see that traffic drops off over time on one domain and picks up on the other, but overall, that doesn't really mean that you have a traffic drop. You're not losing traffic. If we can do this very clean move, then there's not really going to be like a drop period where one, one drops and then the other picks up, but there's more like a fluid transition. Got it. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, I've been part of some domain name changes. Let's mm -hmm. stick, stick on that one for a second. That you know, went completely smoothly. Yeah. Um, sometimes the site will actually go up over yeah. time, so on and so forth. Then there were some weird anomalies, right? Where, and like you said, it depends, right? Mm -hmm. So a site that three days after completely tanks by 70%, mm. and is it based upon the history of the domain? Maybe the domain that they're actually moving to was bought and had a history of its own? Is there anything that you could elaborate on that maybe? So normally it's not much about the history. I mean, the history does play a little bit into it, uh, especially if it's like basically uh, being used for spamming purposes and then you buy and then immediately switch, that's a tricky one. You want to make sure that you're not like dealing with weird issues and you want to have, make sure that you have your monitoring and search console and all that set up properly uh, before you do the switch. Um, it can also just be like if you are making other changes as part of your site move, that's a risky right. one because right. then we can't really, we don't know that it's just a move, but we see like, oh, hold on, that, that like when we are crawling this, there's differences in what we are seeing right. here. Mm, maybe we need to like be careful and recrawl a little more, and then you might, depending depending on how large your your site is, might run into crawl budget things. Um, so it, it depends on a bunch of factors, but normally getting a domain that you know is not like dealing with issues from the past should be just fine. And even if it's a domain with history, we are aware that content on domains do change. Um, but depending on what the domain looked like beforehand, we might not consider it a site move, and then we would have to recrawl and reprocess everything. And that takes a little longer. Interesting. So let's say that there's a site. Um, a domain name that was used. I, I'll give you an example, actually. Mm -hmm. It was a client that um, had a really long domain name. Mm -hmm. They were an e-commerce retailer, and they're like, wow, they want to get just the four-letter domain name mm -hmm. that represented their, their company. Mm -hmm. They finally got it. Yep. They, w they went live with it, right? Um, did the domain name change, and then they called me about a month in, and they're like, oh, no, this is not good. What's going on? It ends up that domain they didn't research and it was some like rock band from the past that had all sorts of crazy spammy links and all sorts of stuff. Ooh, so they definitely yeah. in the short term saw a dip, 
but then it corrected yeah, yeah, itself yeah. over exactly. time. Exactly. As we so, see, like right. content can change. I mean, you 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 buy a spammy domain, or you just literally have it hacked for a while, and then you fix it. You know how that goes, right? Whenever you have problems that we detect and point out to you, and you fix them, it takes a while for us to like understand that it has changed and that everything is better now. Um, but that's generally what what happens. So you want to make sure that you clean out anything that might be problematic up front and give us time to understand that things have now changed and we are now back to a clean slate. So you have to do some cleanup if there was problems in the past. Got know. it. So in that situation, it probably would have been smart. First of all, they researched the history mm -hmm. and then maybe filed a disavow. If yeah. there were a bunch of yeah. bad links there just to make sure from yeah. the beginning that this was more of a cleaner transition? If you take over the domain, make sure that you're measuring what happens through tools like Search Console and that you understand uh, how the domain is doing. Maybe even consider removing the content and waiting for us to understand that content has removed so that, wow. that, that things are normalizing and we're clearing out the signals. And then um, step by step migrate your domain over so that as we discover the page to uh, the, the pages to be moved, uh, we also understand like okay, so this is a new start for this domain. Got yeah. it. Okay. All right. How about another myth? Yeah. Sure. Or, and and, and then, then what, we could, what do you have? And then we could go into more details. All right. What go, yeah, yeah, goes yeah. on behind the scenes. Um, how about uh, taking a site, merging two sites into one site, and thinking that. One plus one will equal two when that ne won't necessarily happen. And I've been part yeah. of a few of those that actually went very well, and others that didn't go poorly, but mm -hmm. it wasn't one plus one equals yeah. two. Yeah. So right? that's that's not a, such a simple uh, situation anymore. Now, beforehand, we talked about a site move, and site yeah. move literally just means we're moving everything we've got over to somewhere else. That's a site move. The moment I'm combining two sites, that's not moving two sites into one. That is creating a new site that is a merged version of the two. Mm -hmm. So that is, by definition, not a site move. This means that we have to understand, OK, so now there's a bunch of more, con like this content moves here, this content moves here, but there's like a bunch of other things going on here. It's a completely different domain, and or maybe not. Maybe it's just like the URL structure changed in some way or another, or the, there's, new URL, there's new content moving here from somewhere else. None of that is as simple as a site move, so we have to basically recrawl a lot of pages depending on how large of, uh, your site is. That might mean that it takes a while for us to literally just get a, get a lay of the land in terms of what content is there now. Um, depending on how you set up your, your site structure, we might understand, okay, there's just like new section of the site has, has been created. Or if you're like mixing them in, then it's like, uh, what's happening here? Did the other things change as well? Or is it just like this new content? So depending on how you merge the sites, uh, you might get very different results from how we are coming to an understanding of your new site structure and your new site content. And that can go smoother or less smoothly, depending on how you do it. Yeah. Got it, got it. Now, with a domain name change, just to hop back there. So I'm really interested, and I know site owners are interested mm -hmm. in this, and a lot of SEOs, I'm assuming. Um, what goes on in the Google machine once the site move, mm -hmm. a domain name change is triggered, right? Change of address is switched, right? That's right. that's activated. Yes. 301s are in place. What happens? What happens? So yeah. what happens is that eventually we're going to be um, crawling what we used to know about your site, and, and we, we do get the signals from other sites uh, pointing to to your content there, and we understand, OK, there's a, there's a redirect, and it's not a redirect in isolation. It is basically literally just a completely move here. Um, and uh, then we have to make sure that what we knew before is true for what happened afterwards, because you could hypothetically have changed the site fundamentally, and then again, it is not a site move. But as, as more we discover that it's basically just a one-to-one -one copy, and it's just like moving everything over from here to there, uh, we will basically make sure that we forward the signals that we had from the old site to the new site, to the new domain, uh, and then make sure that we are getting more or less like an efficient lay of the land without having to recrawl everything. Um, we might still, you might still see like increased crawling activity, but uh, eventually that's going to settle down as we understand that the site is just a copy of what was there at a different space beforehand. Uh, and then eventually the, the signals will fade out and the crawling will fade out on the old domain. And we're just going to be moving swiftly on as, nothing, as if nothing happened uh, afterwards with the new signals that we have for the new domain. Got it, got it. And how fast do signals get passed? That depends like, okay. on so many different things. Uh, if your website doesn't get crawled as much, then pff, that's, there's nothing that's going to make that go like this. Okay. Uh, if there's a lot of crawl demand and crawl budget for your website, then we might actually 
um, do that relatively quickly. It can be in a day, it can take a week. It, it really depends also uh, how many links do we have from different sites, how often do we crawl these, um, and how quickly can we discover that everything has been moved over and uh, yeah, it can take a few days up to a few weeks. Got it. Yeah. And um, what does the change of address tool do differently than just having 301s? I mean, is there some trigger in the back that Google's like, okay, the change of address tool we, is being used. We know that it's verified by this, mm. this owner. Is there something better that happens there? It tips us off that this is what you're intending to do. So we okay. know that it's not like a temporary thing okay. or that it's like a mistake or something. You're explicitly telling us, you're giving us an additional signal saying like, hey, we are moving rather than us being like, Hold, hold on, that's a bunch of redirects happening here. Do we, is, what's hap is that what's going on? So um, you're giving us a more explicit signal that this is a site move, so we can probably reprioritize things. We can make more uh, useful decisions in how we want to crawl and how we want to identify if we can pass the signals on or not. And uh, that might speed things up because we can take a few shortcuts if we know that this is an intentional switch. Got it. So good to do. Mm -hmm. right? Definitely. Um, okay. One thing I've seen, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm just wondering when there's a site move, if there's an, a reassessment of quality on a site. Like when there's a domain name change, is Google going, okay, well now let's reevaluate quality there. Or if there was a URL migration, URLs all changed. That, would it trigger something like that? Well, I mean, that happens constantly, right? Okay. I mean, uh, if you have a page that has high quality content, that doesn't mean that this will always be high quality content. Okay. Which is also why having a history is not like the ends, uh, end of everything. Interesting. Uh, if you have okay. a spammy or a thin content page that was bad and you improve it, we're going to reevaluate the quality as well, right? Okay. It constantly happens. Uh, site move is no different, but obviously when you change URLs and your, especially URL structure, um, then that tips us off to like, oh, hold on, there's some, we're not sure about this. Is, is this the same as we had beforehand? If so, we can just like move the signals over to the new URL. If we are not sure about this, we have to make a very careful evaluation if that is true or not. So yes, it is doing that, but it does that all the time. So Got it, got it. So basically, you know, I've heard before from like John and, and stuff like that, that, you know, they're going to reevaluate a piece of content based upon its current Mm -hmm. form, Absolutely. right? Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of what you're saying, yeah. right? So, so it would make sense that sometimes, because what I've seen is, let's say a domain name change happens, a URL migration, and then maybe two weeks later there's like a core update and suddenly the site either goes up or down. It's like, was that due to the change or was it something random? I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it, things always fluctuate, yeah. right? So it's really hard to see the signal from the noise there and site moves, it's, especially if it really is just a site move, so you change your domain, domain name or something. Uh, don't really like change the quality evaluation or something like that. So. Okay. Now we spoke about signals being passed. Can you mm -hmm. just, for some people that might not know it, what signals you're right. talking about? Right. Or? So to explain that in very simple terms, um, when we visit a site, we collect a bunch of information, right? So like how fast is the site? Is this HTTPS or not? Uh, is, is the content good? What's, what's this page about? All this kind of stuff, all these sign uh, signals and information about the page. Uh, that later go into ranking. There's like hundreds of these factors that we look at um, and we collect them per page. If you yeah. would go to a restaurant, you kind of do the same thing, right? It's like, do I feel welcome here? Is the staff nice? Is the food quality nice? Is the price fair? These kind of things you put in your file as signals for right, this restaurant. Right. And then if someone asks you for a recommendation, um, you are probably using these signals that you picked up. Like, oh, if you're, if you're into Asian cuisine, uh, that place on the 35th Street or whatever is really, really nice, um, but pr quite pricey. Uh, and if you then know that this restaurant has moved, you probably want to reevaluate some of these, right? It's like, oh yeah, I was there when they were in the other location. It was fantastic. I don't know how it is in the new location. So that's kind of the situation that we are facing as well, right? If you're literally just moving everything over, we can be like, yeah, no, the, the restaurant just moved so, somewhere else or the food truck moved somewhere else. It's the same food truck. It just stands somewhere else. It's nice. It's still cheap. Nice, good stuff. Um, but if, if something changes, the food truck now moves into a location and you're like, is that nice? Is it still the same stuff? Is it still cheap or is it now more pricey? And that kind of is true for, for search engines as well. We have to then reevaluate what we are seeing, right? So first we had a baby algorithms analogy from Gary Eish at PubCon. <laughs> yes. And now we have a food cart yeah, analogy yeah, from you. Yeah, it just which... keeps getting more colorful, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I can see a blog post coming out about that one too.
How about this one, right? And this happens sometimes. Let's say there's a domain name change or URL migration, mm -hmm. traffic plummets for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. When do you revert, right? When do you Fair roll enough. this whole thing yeah. back? Now, only a few times in my career, and I've been through a ton of these, have we had to do that? Mm -hmm. And I know in the Google documentation, it, it basically says, you know, you have 180 days to, you know, mm -hmm. reverse the change of address, and then you yeah. gotta put 301s all the way back from where they were coming from. It's yeah. like a total nightmare. Yeah. Um, so from your perspective, when do you think, let's say a site saw a drop of 50% mm -hmm. after a migration for whatever reason, mm -hmm. at what point do you go, yeah, maybe you should roll this thing back? I think. That depends on what you're identifying as the reason for what went wrong, right? Okay. You, you definitely want to do some some uh, diagnosis first sure, before sure. you do any moves in any direction. It's like, so is it is it that we're still seeing the old ones and for some reason not registering that these are uh, redirections or are we just not crawling the old old ones uh, often enough so that we have just like hit a really nasty spot in the in the timeline of where we could potentially have moved or. What's, what's going on here? If, if you really do not understand where this is coming from and you have looked at everything and you cannot explain what's happening, right. I would say after a few weeks, maybe like a month, maybe give it a month or something, and then I would consider um, either getting help, that's the best way to do it, like get some help somewhere mm -hmm. uh, with, this, with this stuff, or um, if you really don't understand what's happening and it doesn't get better after a month or so, consider doing uh, a reversion, but only if you are really, really sure and out of options. Right. Because most of the times it is some sort of technical problem, or yeah. it's like you missed half of your redirections, and we didn't really register that it was a change of address much, um, or whatever has gone wrong. Like there's so many things that can go wrong, and yeah. you can misconfigure. Right. Uh, but you want to see tra tra traffic that drops off should eventually also pick up again on the other side, and you want to monitor both sides closely. And if you really see that there is literally no pickup on the other side, then that's a sign that something was not well done or well thought through. And then you want to reconsider if you might want to go back for a while, understand what happened, and then right. regroup. Or something algorithmically happened. Or right? something algorithmically possible. Happen. Or, right? or I mean, if we did detected spammy content or you had like some issues, okay. uh, manual actions, that's also a good reason to say like, okay, got it. We don't want to get these in the mix. Got it. So make sure that you're starting from a clean state, and then you should not have to revert. Got it. And then uh, on that note, so from a robots.txt perspective, there are mm. some sites. You know, I usually help large scale sites. Sometimes they have you know, a few hundred thousand. URLs being blocked by robots that text, mm -hmm. and they want that, right? Mm -hmm. So during the move, does it make sense to open them up so Google can see all those old URLs that maybe it had indexed but were blocked by robots that text or anything? Or does it? Would you I think would that not just change that? Okay, I would just keep like if if you had a reason to not have them in there, uh, to not have them crawled, right? Um, I don't see why a migration would necessarily mean that you need to have them crawled now. Got it. Okay, that's good to know because again, some large scale sites have a ton of URLs yeah. categorized as that, and then they don't know what to do. You know, so <laughs> um, how about problems that you see from Google's end after migration, like robust that text blocking mm -hmm. the new domain or no index across the entire new content, or yeah. you know, there's or how about um, Google Search Console settings not being set on oh, the new domain, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, things yeah, like yeah. that. Uh, it's all sorts of these things. Uh, I think like one of the things is that some people are trying to use uh, site moves as an opportunity to change all sorts of things. Ah, I was going to bring up that, which later. is really yeah. really weird because like it, realistically, you want to if you're if you're in an un, unsure situation or if you're in a situation where you're not sure where you're going. Uh, you don't want to change all the variables at the same time because that means you have a lot of moving targets. And then later on, if you have a problem, you're like, oh no, is this our new uh, URL structure or is this the new technology that we're using or is this the, the new content that we put up or is it the site move or is it an algorithmic thing or is it a penalty or what, what's happening here and you're not sure about this. If you're doing one step at a time, you move to a different domain or, you, or before you move domains, you're switching to a new tech stack or whatever you're doing, do it step by step. Okay. I think that's like the biggest thing that you can do for yourself to like keep level headed. Got it, got it. And do you, does Google have anything behind the scenes, kind of like what you brought up, where some sites are like, well, I'm going to change domain names because I've been algorithmically destroyed over the past few years, or to get out of manual action, you know, some people think that they're going to do that. Back in the day, people were doing that for Penguin, and some people were saying that was working. You know, so is there anything behind the scenes that when, uh, let's say, a domain name change happens, they go, 
well, let's make sure that this is cool or not. Or I is mean, it not? Yeah, as, okay. I, as I said, like, yeah. we're constantly evaluating okay. what happens on the page. So if okay. you have a bad bunch of content and spammy links yeah. uh, to one, and then you just move to the next, then we might lose some of the signals along the way. But basically, bad stays bad, Got no it. matter where you move. Got yeah. it. OK, that's good to know. Well, I think awesome. that, that was um, probably the that list. Was, that was, probably, it was a lot of list. information, yeah, right? Yeah, that was yeah. amazing. Thank you so much for making it here. And I hope that you all enjoyed uh, our little conversation on site moves and um, stay tuned for more. Bye. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Next episode, I have Lily Ray with me and uh, what are we gonna discuss, Lily? We're gonna talk about is too much content a good thing for SEO? All right, so stay tuned.